the 1989 Star Trek Enterprise kit tonight on What's in the Box. What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello everybody, my name is Trevor Slescu and I'm the owner of Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. So tonight, carrying on in our series, we've got another special edition of the original Star Trek USS Enterprise by AMT Ertl. This one was made back in 1989, and I've got another one of these kits from my good friend Barry, my Star Trek buddy. And now, we're going to take a look at this kit, and this, this again is another one of my personal favorites because this is like one of the earliest Star Trek kits I've ever built. And on the original box, if you look at my What's in the Box 1983 edition of this, um, on that box it used to say, build the entire fleet. So I've been trying throughout my whole life to get enough of these kits to build all the sister ships to the United Federation of Planets USS Enterprise. So let's go down to our table and take the lid off this and see what's inside. Now when this kit came out it was 1989 and there was a lot of popularity around Star Trek at the time because Star Trek The Next Generation was on TV. The original series was still in syndication on many, many channels, as well as Star Trek V, The Final Frontier, directed by William Shatner, the captain of the original Enterprise, was making its debut in the theaters. Um, yeah, Star Trek V was not the greatest Star Trek, but however... This kit had come out at the time because AMT had seen the demand, of course, for Star Trek. And at the same time, the Next Generation Enterprise was for sale. And the interesting thing about these Enterprises are they, these ones are 18 inches long when you assemble them. And the Next Generation Enterprise was also 18 inches long as a model kit. So this box I got from Barry, it's uh, kind of beaten up as you can tell, and somebody's already cut off the the wrapping on it. But um, if you watch the 1984 video, which I'll link you to, you'll see that this is quite a simplified version of the box art from the 83 edition. It's uh, kind of plain. And then here they have, you know, what the uh, model kit has in all the different languages. And if you just Look at the English here. It says, 18 inches long, assembled, includes display stand, authentic decals, paint and spent not included. And then you get into the Spanish and the Swedish and everything else. And then, of course, there it's got, you know, the Ertl Company and, you know, Paramount Pictures and all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. So... Without further ado, now you notice that I changed my table here because it's gray plastic and the gray plastic table just kind of made it disappear. So we take the lid off and lo and behold, what do we see? Now somebody's also, I mean, this box is pretty much falling apart. So somebody's also taken off the plastic from before. Uh, now the saucer can nicely hide that. So you get the same saucer again as in the 83 kit. This one also includes your grid lines on the top of the saucer and the same turbo lift elevator problem where it doesn't attach <laughs> and the same three little dimples underneath. Uh, essentially the plastic pieces in this kit are the same as the 83 so let's just take another quick quicker look at it this time. Now here you can see the nice detail in there's a, a grid in here, and if you can catch this, there's uh, four little grids going down the inner pylons of the uh, warp engines. And of course, it's still got that little ring roll here, for the relief to get the uh, part out of the tree, or the mold, sorry. And you've got your warp, your uh, impulse engines and your intercoolers, which would go in there. Oops. And then this one has, like these pieces always broke off inside the kit. Uh, but this one has them all intact on the tree. And these are the in, the uh, intercoolers that go off the back of your warp engines. 
and there's four little windows in here. On the studio model, there's actually three, two at the top, nothing here, and then one at the bottom. And these are your intercoolers for your buzzards going under there. Of course, more work engines. And that one I dropped on the floor. <laughs> the stand with the the sensor dish there. Main deflector dish, if you want to call it that. Now these two pieces would go together for your secondary hull. And this is the bottom of the secondary hull. So this whole thing would go together like this. Okay, well you get the idea. <laughs> These two, then this. And then you have your shuttle bay doors, which is a nice little detailed bit. It's got all the ribs in there. I know the camera's having a difficult time focusing. Okay, there you go. And the little observation lounge thing at the back here to help guide in your shuttle crafts. And then we've got our other warp engine pieces and the deflector dish housing at the front of the ship. And again, these rings are all the same. They're the same distance apart and none of them protrude outside of this like they're supposed to do. The outer ring is supposed to protrude out and there's supposed to be different distances between the rings. Uh, there is your front and rear parts of your warp engines. And there is something I've noticed on these. There are little plastic marks in here and there's a little plastic line etched right there on your warp engine. <laughs> the camera's not picking this up. But these lines are guides for you to be able to put those in the right position around there and to line this up so that these bumps here are in the, the correct positions. Okay, the other part that's in this, in the box, are again your top and bottom dome for your saucer. And the one with the bump goes underneath the bottom. The like there. And the one without is your top bridge dome. And in the box you get, these are very ancient, <laughs> join the blue printer, or get subscribed to the blue printer magazine, which I did back in the day, and join the official Star Trek fan club. And I don't think this is valid anymore, because 1989. Uh, now this is something that I was trying to show in the unboxing of the 1983 edition, which totally took me by surprise, because these are the only instructions I've ever seen in both editions, except for the one that I opened there from Barry, which surprised me, because this is what I'm used to. Oh, and if you look here, this is the new AMT Ertl logo at the time. So, anyway. Now, we have the decal sheet inside, which this one is very clean, uh, you know, compared to some of the other ones where this has actually gone yellow on some of the ones I have, the real old ones. But I'm just going to put this aside for a minute because the part I wanted to show you in the instructions on the other one are as follows. Now, if you look, the pictures of assembly here, and this is the one I'm used to, are laid out differently along the page. Now this part is still the same, which I've read in the 1983 edition of this video, but I, I'm going to briefly read some of the parts I didn't read. If you look at the top, it's got this header, Starfleet Command, United Federation of Planets, Public Relations Division. Uh, to Old Earth Model Kit Enthusiasts, Communique Number CP12305. From Lieutenant, Lieutenant Commander J. Bales Hague, or Bilt, Bilt's Hague, 
It's got a signature and the star date 3155.3. Subject, Heavy Cruiser Class Starship. Then it goes into the USS Enterprise as it was seen on your old Earth television series called Star Trek. And now I've read this in the 1983 edition of this. But it's interesting, this is supposed to be a, a communique from the future, going back to the past. <laughs> and saying that how to build your model kit. Okay, now, this is the same as in the 83 instructions that I have. But you'll notice something here that I didn't point out. If you look at this font, it is a font called Micro Gamma. Now, this only appears on this picture. And the reason for that is this is the same font in the Franz Joseph Technical Manual. And this is the same ship that they show on here in the Franz Joseph Technical Manual blueprints, which we will I'll show you in a, a different episode of this series of Star Trek. But yeah, this ship coincides with the Franz Joseph Tech Manual ship. Now here they take off the one engine just for clarity, although they could have actually put it in. It would only be there and there, not really hampering the drawing. Um, but this is the part that I wanted to show you. This was not in the previous uh, instructions in the 1983 video of the same kit. Below is a complete listing of Starfleet's Heavy Cruiser class contingent. Now this is the number system from the Franz Joseph Tech Manual that I was trying to refer to in that video. The USS Constellation is NCC 1017. Now that is also seen on the TV show. The Republic is 1731, also on the show. Constitution is the class ship, 1700, also on the show. The Enterprise is also on the show, 1701. The Farragut was named on the show, but never had a number. And all these other ships were named on the show, except for the Congo and the Valiant. Or, sorry, the Intrepid, one of the two. I think it's the Valiant. The Intrepid gets blown up. It had the Vulcan crew. But at any rate, the Congo never was. But this is how Franz Joseph numbered the ships. 1700, 1701, 02, 03, 04, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11 for the, the ships. So you have the Lexington as 1703, Yorktown as 1704, Excalibur 1705, Exeter 1706, The Hood 1707, The Intrepid 1708, The Valiant 1709, Congo 1710 and Potemkin is 1711. I had that off camera, didn't I? Okay, uh, just memorize that for a little bit. Now these book, these names actually came out of um, Gene Roddenberry's original names for the ship, and this was in the Making of Star Trek book. The thing is, the Making of Star Trek book has names that they suggested listed like this. But then it says, for the final names of the starship, starships in Starfleet, and they list it as a paragraph. And most people miss that because they look at the charts instead of the paragraph. Except Franz Joseph didn't, and that's how he numbered these ships. The numbers are consistent and they're concise, except for Republic and Constellation, which are the oddballs, 1017 and 1731. In my theory of this, I think that the Constellation and Republic numbers are carried over from previous starships that may have bared those numbers in the same way as in Star Trek IV at the end, the USS Enterprise has dash A at the end. Same theory, different time period, different ideas on the numbers. However, now that we have the Franz Joseph numbering system, the decal sheet that they give you in the kit Finally, apart from the 1983 version, which never had the names and what numbers they went to, now you finally got an idea of where the names and numbers go. Now, the interesting thing about this deck all sheet that I didn't say in the 83 version is my friend Barry refers to this font as the font from hell because it is not the right shapes to the actual real Star Trek Enterprise font as seen on the TV show which is a U.S. Air Force type of font. I forget the full name of it. On that font, the numbers are actually wider than this. These are very abrupt and short. And when, you know, compressed this way, whereas the actual 
uh, U.S. Air Force type lettering that they used is wider. So all they give you on this decal sheet are the pennants and the names. So your Enterprise actually ends up looking pretty plain Jane. Okay. It really does end up... Let's see, let's zoom in on this. Looking basically quite washed out with a very uh, lack of detail when you actually build this kit up. However, it still does give you a good representation of the Enterprise, no matter how you slice it. So just think, guys, when you were a kid like myself, all the way going back from 1973 when this decal sheet came in up to uh, 1996, I think, was the last edition of this kit, these were the decals you actually had. So this is the kind of Enterprise you would have built back in the day. Now that being said, an amazing thing happened in 2009. AMT and Ertl and Polar Lights and uh, MPC were bought up by a company called Round 2. Round 2 wanted to reissue the original model kits in those lineups. And they have come out with an updated version of the exact same 18-inch Enterprise kit. This one is seen in the Tholian web. This is a glow-in-the-dark edition. One day I will do a review on these. But what is nice about this is that they went in and they got rid of the grid lines on the saucer, which I still like the grid lines, uh, for reasons as in stated in my 1983 video. But the thing about this is they have made a whole new... Oh, you can't see with the glare. They've made a whole new decal sheet for this thing. It follows a Greg Giant or Gene <laughs> the Greg Gene numbering system. So you get stuff like 1764 and 1663 and all this other stuff for some of the ships. But the beauty of this whole thing is there is a decal sheet inside here that is literally the size of the bottom of the box. And it has enough building options in the decals to make your ship into the pilot film version the second pilot film version, and the production film version, as well as the ISS Enterprise from Mirror Mirror, and uh, many, many other starships. So, and it's got the right U.S. Air Force type of font to it. So that's the improvements of the new kits versus the old kits, which I will show in a future video. So on that note, we now return to our 1989 kit. And what I'd like to do is introduce a new series that's going to be coming up called Let's Build It, where we're going to actually look at building these kits. And the fun part about these kits is they are not accurate. If you would like an accurate version of this kit from the studio model, scale down, check out the Polar Lights Enterprise kits. But for our our purposes of this video, I'm going to show you guys what it's like to build this kit as if it was 1989. I'm also going to show you how to reinforce the model, make it stronger, make it better, and uh, many, many other things. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode of What's in the Box, where we looked at the classic 1989 Star Trek USS Enterprise kit. And if you would like to see my review of the 1983 classic Enterprise kit, please click up here. If you would like to see me open up the Romulan Bird of Prey, click down here. If you'd like to see the old original series uh, Klingon D7, click up here. And please like and subscribe to us right here. And while you're at it, visit our web store at www.monster-hobbies.ca. And we will see you again.